Um, I would like to conjure up the world of Basant, the kite flying festival Lahore used to have. It used to bring so much joy to the city. There would be thousands of people who would come together from different parts of the country, including Lahoreites, the rich and poor alike. And it was truly one of the most egalitarian festivals. Unfortunately, due to right-wing right resistance and caving in by the authorities, Basant has been mothballed. This sense of Basant was something that as a child, as a student in HSN College, I took great pride in. My parents used to have Basant rooftop parties, and there would be a sense of sharing of festivity, ideas, people coming from India, dancing the way we are restricted to do so, on rooftops, just the joie de vivre that we should be projecting from Lahore, and the socio-economic potential that it could unleash. Unfortunately, we didn't take a long-term perspective and just let go of this festival. While in HSN, now that I look back, I realize that not many of us were reading literature. Not many of us knew of the great Urdu veteran writers such as Abdullah Hussain Sahib, Intazar Hussain Sahib, and others. And the reason may have been a lot to do with the totalitarian regimes we've had in the past. There was the dark dictatorship of General Ziaul Haq, during which the 10 years or 11 years of which we saw state censorship being applied on textbooks, on literature, on musical and cultural activities galore. When I went to the University of Chicago for my undergrad experience, I realized that there's so much to pick up on beyond the text, beyond the classroom. And the year round, on a quarterly basis, range of activities that were planned with interesting speakers from different parts of the world to engage us in the life of the mind truly tit titillated me. It fascinated me to think that why on earth, when I'm in Pakistan, won't I be able to teach and look at uh, Gandhi the way I was being taught of Gandhi in Chicago, the way I was being taught Bhagavad Gita. These are texts that otherwise are, of course, totally off limits for us as students in Pakistan. When I had to speak to my grandparents, they would, of course, talk of a syncretic cosmopolitan entity of being South Asians. Why is it that after 1947, 1971, and the dark times that I mentioned earlier of Ziaul Haq, we have further gone inwards. We have recessed to the point that there's little acceptability of ideas. Anything that is going to be seemingly remote from the standpoint of the state agenda is anathema to the people here. It's, that, it's with that thought that when I came back, I realized that we, ha we had really surrendered far too much. It's almost as if the citizens had given up the pride that they took in the city, in the form of Basant, in the form of countless other, other festivals that were held, including the horse and cattle show. The cultural and literary mosaic of the city was just not being cohered. Everything was going increasingly towards private parlors and spaces. When we started the Lahore Literary Festival in 2013, we received an exhilarating response. At 9.30 a.m., we had the great titan, Tariq Ali, a key pillar of the left, who drew crowds around that time of the morning that exceeded our expectations. There was a hall of the size of 1,000, and it was chock-a-block. That was the face of Lahore that we showed to the world, that people are eager, thirsty, yearning for ideas. The LLF has grown since then. We've had our four editions, the recent most being concluded the last weekend. We've risen in numbers from 35,000 the first year to over 100,000 this year. And this is in spite of the resistance posed by the authorities. For whatever the reasons, we had to truncate our program, and we had to relocate to an altogether different venue that was unsuited to our requirements. But surely, we took on that challenge. 
We didn't budge. We wanted to ensure that the festival's sustainability, the qualitative ethos, and the message that we wanted to deliver and bring about throughout the city withstood the pressures. And this time around, the buoyancy of the uh, city, uh, city of Lahore, the people who flew in from Karachi and Lahore, Islamabad, and the students from across Pakistan truly showed what this country is capable of. It's capable of civic pride. It's capable of bringing together dangerous ideas under one platform in a safe place. We are willing to talk about everything under the sun, but the state must not let us determine what is good for us and what isn't. The Lahore Literary Festival has provided that space for critical thinking, for discourses, for dissent. We feel that unless and until writers and poets, artists, and musicians don't have that kind of platform, we're not going to be a thriving cultural mosaic that we otherwise keep championing ourselves to be custodians of. Lahore is widely known to be the cultural capital, but unless and until there isn't the Lahore Literary Festival and a thousand and one other festivals in other languages, you will not have that true on-ground indigenous grassroots sense of belonging and of cultural pride. The audiences that we've had are eclectic, as I've mentioned. We've had packed halls. There's intellectual curiosity among even the students who otherwise may not have heard of many of the authors who come, for instance, some of them from Africa, some of them from Middle East. But we make stars out of our speakers. We see queues being formed outside the booksellers, and the sales of books is something that you can determine that totally in the sheer uh, sphere of the book sales, certainly there is this drive, there is this penchant for knowledge, and the book signings that you see uh, uh, students getting done, it convinces me that there is a critical mass out there. Even though, you know, there's the doom and gloom scenario constantly being peddled about on mainstream media, current affairs shows are all basically pivoted around Cassandra's. We feel that the positive image of Pakistan is often overlooked. So when you have thousands of people coming with the, that kind of linguistic and ethnic diversity, you surely are reaching out to that mass which otherwise gets totally fogged over. And that's the blind spot of our media. And we're entirely responsible for the narrative that we're formulating and conveying to the rest of the world. This platform allows us to take ownership of the narrative that we'd like to tailor and project to the world. In the case of the Lahore Literary Festival, in terms of our programming, we've had a range of ideas. So going from something that is as prosaic to something as sublime, going from something that is on, say, our own patterns of emerging literature in Urdu to something as global and edgy as a whole session on David Bowie. That's the fun of the Lahore Literary Festival. It's mixing the highbrow, the inaccessible with the accessible. And it's just this jamboree of ideas that make people convinced and to go from one hall to another that it's worth the effort to take a train ride from Peshawar or Karachi and to be there for the festival because it's truly become a matter of pride for not just the city of Lahore, but the whole country. People look forward to this festival year round. We see at the venue a sense of civic pride. We see people queuing up the way you wouldn't see at airports and railway stations. The sense of care and courtesy extended to elders and disabled is something that lifts one's spirits. And the sense of participation that you see among the students, the volunteers who come together, we had, in fact, 140 plus volunteers this year. And they weren't necessarily trained beforehand because we went through quite a bit of rigmarole putting together the edition this year. Nonetheless, they took on to that challenge and surely they delivered. They looked after the nuts and bolts of the festival and they truly are the unsung heroes of the festival. The Lahore Literary Festival has honored Pakistan's established and emerging 
talent pool. We've given lifetime achievement awards to veteran Urdu writers, and we've not been myopic or parochial. We've also this year given an award to Nancy Dupree, one of the leading archaeologists based in Afghanistan, who's rendered invaluable services for the restoration of the Kabul Museum. And we take pride if the state won't reach out, we will, through the civil society, to, gain, to give that kind of recognition to our counterparts in Afghanistan or India, because we believe in a common humanism. That's what the festival is striving for. As a result, call it a positive externality, we are also incubating, encouraging, inspiring tourism to the city. Lahore, as I said, has a host of architectural marvels. Each year, when we have our delegates, they insist upon taking a rickshaw ride through the walled city to go visit the mosque. And this is the world that Kipling conjures. This is the world which is mentioned in Milton's Paradise Lost. This is the world with which we have the English patient open up. So Lahore is a battleground of ideas. It had been in the past. It was. It's a site of movements and manifestos. However, because of the right-wing pressures, because of the sheer security wave that enveloped everything, the entire goodwill, the entire buoyancy that this town stood for, we feel that it was important to reclaim that space. We have done our bit, but there's a lot more to be done. And we hope that all of you will join our hands one by one. Each one of us can, uh, can do our bit. It's the collective citizenry that can bring about that fundamental difference to the country's image globally. May I add here, we re this year had Alexandra Pringle, who's the editor-in-chief of Bloomsbury Publishing, based out of London. She called the Lahore Literary Festival not just what it is, but it's also the Lahore Literary Fabulous Edition, which truly... <laughs> which truly is a great endorsement from the standpoint of in looking from the prism of publishing houses at Pakistan and to facilitate new writers. We take pride in the fact that we've also worked with some publishing houses on translations. This coming year, we're going to be undertaking many branching off activities, which are going to be the sort of fruits that we are now going to be uh, reaping from the platform that we've set up. Uh, in May this year, we're taking Loho Literary Festival to Asia Society for a two-day edition. And the reason is simple. We have to connect with the world. We cannot pretend everything starts and ends with Pakistan. So there's a lot of goodwill that we can muster up, that we can demonstrate and celebrate if we were to able to bring about those linkages that are fundamental in this globalized world between Pakistan and key institutions, whether they're publishing houses or think tanks or writers or uh, I, I, various other nodes of creativity. But certainly Lahore Literary Festival has been a able to push through some of the boundaries that otherwise were not accessible to surmount. And on that note, I would really like to join all of you to thank you for being here, for giving me the opportunity, and to hopefully find from within here some torchbearers who could take the message forward. We would like, as I said, the festival to go mushrooming across the country. It'll be phenomenal to see the festival proliferating into smaller editions. This could even be neighborhood niche-oriented, but it'll be amazing to see this kind of collective effervescence if we could bring about across the country, from Pishan to Peshawar, from Lahore to Lailpur, wherever it is, let there be a thousand and one ideas more to bloom through these festivals. Thank you very much.